The next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 2777 in the name of Alex Riley on long-standing underpayment of social care staff. Uh, this debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Alex Riley to open the debate. Uh, around seven minutes, please, Mr Riley. Thank you, President Officer. I want to begin by thanking those who signed my motion making today's debate possible. I want to thank in particular Willie Rennie and Murdo Fraser, who signed the motion to allow the debate to happen. I was surprised that the Greens refused to sign the motion, given that the treatment of workers described in the motion happens every day in every community up and down Scotland. And the refusal of SNP members to sign what is a factual statement just demonstrates the stick your head in the sand and hope it fixes itself approach to what is a growing crisis impacting on older people across Mid Scotland and Fife indeed across all of Scotland. But let me be clear, I have not brought forward this debate to point blame at any political party. Far from it. What I am attempting to do is to say that unless we take action now to address the unequal and unfair treatment of care workers, then we will not fix the growing crisis in the provision of community care in Scotland. I say it is a matter of fact, for it is a fact that care workers working on the poorest terms and conditions and the lowest pay are walking away from being carers, and why would they stay when they are treated so poorly? And when you look at the way some care workers are treated, is it any wonder that firms cannot recruit new staff and are losing the ones that they have? Now, some will say there is a shortage of labour across many sectors and that Brexit has made the challenges even more difficult. And this is true. But why then would you choose to work in a sector which is a very demanding job when that job has some of the worst terms and conditions in the entire labour market in Scotland? Last week, giving evidence to MSPs on the Audit Committee, on his report into social care, Scotland's Auditor General Stephen Boyle said improvements must be made urgently, and he warned some things cannot wait for the establishment of a national care service. The committee heard there are, and I quote, major problems with recruitment and retention in the social care sector, and existing staff do not feel valued or properly paid. I have talked with care workers who work an eight-hour shift and only get paid for five or six of those hours, as they are not paid for the hours that they use to travel between clients. They tell me that they are actually working often 10 or 11 hours, as they are on a split shift with two hours break in the day, and even if their clients are miles from where they live, then they just have to sit in their cars during those hours. They are given a mileage allowance of 25p a mile for when they are travelling between clients, but they are not paid for their own time. 25p a mile when MSPs in this place are paid, I think, 48 pence a mile, as is the case with the majority public sector workers. The difference between council staff working as carers and that of private sector is astounding and cannot be allowed to continue. Council staff will be paid for the hours they work, not just the hours they are in a person's house. And they will get the same travel allowance as all public sector workers. How can it be that you have two sets of workers doing the very same job, being paid by the public purse to deliver the same public services, and yet they can be treated so differently. As Auditor, as Auditor General told MSPs last week, the predominantly female workforce does not feel adequately rewarded or valued. There are also major problems with recruitment and retention. The Scottish Government now needs to take action to improve working conditions for this vitally important workforce 
according to the Auditor General, who said otherwise it would not be possible to deliver its ambitions for social care. On Tuesday, the Government launched a consultation on what is currently working well and what needs to change in social care. The Health Secretary, Hamza Yusuf, said, I want Scotland to be the best place in the world to grow old, with older people living full and rewarding lives, contributing to society and actively involved in their health and social care. I am here today, presiding officer, because older people are getting their care cut packages cut. People in desperate need are not able to get a care package. The numbers trapped in hospital because they cannot get home because there is no care package to support them are increasing. And the reason the private companies who, through a procurement process, have been commissioned by the health and social care partnerships to deliver half hour and hour blocks of care say they can only pay the staff for what they are being paid for, which is the commissioning of the blocks of care. And as a result, the care workers end up being treated so poorly. And that is the main point. These workers may be being paid by private companies, but the money comes from government. The contracts, the commission, commissioning is done through the government's health and social care partnerships. But by putting the work out to tender and through the commissioning regime, then it is cheaper for the health and social care partnerships. But let me be clear, this practice, which is resulting in an appalling treatment of care workers, has in the past been practised by all political parties when in power. So it's not about trying to blame one political party. It's about recognising that care on the cheap does not and will not work. I'm well aware. I'm well aware of the ongoing debate about a national care service. And I will, along with my party, fully engage within that debate. But I want to stress, unless we deal with the poor terms and conditions and low pay of care workers now, then the problems are going to just get worse and worse, and older people will pay the price through their suffering. Let's deal with this issue and deal with it now. Thank you, Mr Rowley. I now call on Emma Harper to be followed by Craig Coy. Around four minutes, please, Ms Harper. Thank you, President Officer. I welcome the opportunity to speak in this debate, and I, I, I do recognise Alec Rowley for securing it. And Alec Rowley has just outlined the, out, um, he's just outlined the complexity of the care system. My first job when I left school was in a care home before I started my nurse training. And, and I know that was a long time ago, presiding officer. And, um, and I remember right then, you know, the complexity of the work that we were trained to do and being asked to do. From the outset, I want to be clear that our social care workforce here in Scotland are absolutely valued. They do crucial work every day, often in very challenging circumstances. And the COVID-19 pandemic in particular has emphasised the need for our social care sector to be supported and valued. And social care means all types of personal and practical support for children, young people and adults who require it. And it includes a wide range of roles, including home carers, care home staff, activity and care coordinators, care managers, social work assistants, children and young person support workers, day centre staff, cleaners and care settings, admin support staff and many others. So it's important to keep this in mind when, dis to, when discussing the sector. It is more complex than just one job, one role or one pay scale. Side and officer, social care in a, is an investment in Scotland's people, society and economy. Many of us or many of our family members and friends will already use social care and many of us will need to use social care at some point in our lives in the future. The social care sector in Scotland employs some 200,000 people and has an estimated financial value to Scotland's economy of £3.4 billion. The sector is hugely important and a lot of work is going on to improve the sector and the experience of its workforce. The Scottish Government are committed to supporting people to stay at home or in a homely setting with maximum independence for as long as possible. It is crucial to attract and retain the right people to work in social care, 
in the support and in social work, something which is not helped by the withdrawal from the EU, as Alec Rowley has uh, uh, stated as well. And we do need to raise the status of social care as a profession. We have discussed this in Health and Sport Committee as well, which I am a member of. So to do this, the Scottish Government have embarked on the largest reform of adult social care in Scotland, um, working with COSLA, the people with lived experience, unpaid carers and other stakeholders. The Scottish Government have developed the following priorities, which are currently being implemented when it comes to social care. These are to establish a shared agreement on the purpose of adult social care support with a focus on human rights, social care support that is centred on a person and how they want to live their life and what is important to them. What matters to them is important, presiding officer. Changing the attitudes towards social care support so that it is seen as an investment in Scotland's people that is absolutely valuable as well, and strengthening the quality and consistency of co-production at local and national level as well. Derek Feely's independent review of adult social care was a crucial step towards the creation of the National Care Service for Scotland, and this will enable us to improve the experiences of everybody who works in and uses social care. The review was comprehensive and found many aspects of our adult social care system that are worthy of celebration, such as the introduction of self-directed support. The Carers Act is also important and the introduction of free personal care. Presiding officer, with the aims that the government has in mind, in, and which also includes the principles of fair work, we need to welcome that the Scottish Government is taking issues forward and I look forward to working further with Health and Social Care Committee to look at what we can do and I look forward to the hearing from the Minister in his response because I am conscious of the time. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you, Ms Harper. I now call Craig Hoy to be followed by Paul O'King. Oh, around four minutes, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I would like to start by thanking Alex Rowley for bringing forward this important debate and for his considered contribution and his long-standing commitment to social care. Can I start my speech by thanking everyone in the social care system for all the work that they have done and all the work that they will go on to do? And can I also thank those unpaid carers, sometimes very young, sometimes much older, often family members, who look after many in our communities? They are unsung heroes. We are all accustomed, accustomed to paying tribute to the valuable work done by our NHS staff, but our care and support workers do not always get the public uh, recognition they deserve. But there has never been a time when our frontline workforce have demonstrated such extraordinary dedication, com uh, compassion and selfless commitment. As Alex Rowley said, the Government urgently needs to address the social care crisis, and pay and conditions are part of the solution to this crisis. Heroic staff are overwhelmed, and care is still being provided on the cheap, as Alex Rowley said. Staff have gone above and beyond during the pandemic, but they have not been given the leadership or the appreciation that they deserve. And people who require care services are suffering as a result. A report by Audit Scotland on social care, published in January, should act as a wake-up call. The report revealed a social care system where staff are not adequately valued, engaged or rewarded for their vitally important role. And Audit Scotland reported that the average hourly rate across all care in Scotland is just £9.79 £9 per hour. And let's also bear in mind that the new £10.50 uh, rate will not apply to all of those who work in social care. Let's remember that 15% of social care workers work unpaid overtime. 13% of the workforce work over 50 hours a week. Two in 10 are not on permanent contracts. The industry is undermined by long hours, low pay and low recognition which means care providers struggle to find and keep staff. It cannot be right that supermarkets and shops often pay more and appear to offer a greater sense of career progression. This is wrong and it must change. And it angers staff when they are described as low skilled, when in fact their roles are highly skilled and complex. They have to understand medical needs, deliver medication and possess uh, soft skills such as empathy and tact. We can see quite clearly that there are problems of recruitment difficulties, rising sickness, and rising sickness absence and high vacancy uh, levels. And the SNP's solution to this in part is to develop a national care service. But far from being a positive step, uh, this could be perceived as a direct assault on local government, removing accountability and potentially undermining 
patient care. So instead of reorganising the chairs on the deck, ministers must now urgently and meaningfully engage with uh, carers, staff and those who work in, this, in the sector, but also those who need support. Deputy Presiding Officer Dr Donna McCaskill, Chief Executive uh, of Scottish Care, has warned that the industry is at risk of disintegration and collapse, so we simply cannot wait for a national care service. And I accept that additional funding is being made available. In 2024-25, Scotland will benefit from an additional £1.1 billion as a result of the health and social care levy. But if the government is really committed to ensuring that every person receives the care they need to be provided with the dignity that they deserve, then they must take urgent action to address the needs of the, work, the workforce. And that means to better workforce plan. We need to show people that, who show an exceptional level of personal commitment and accountability that they are valued in terms of pay and conditions. And it's time to respect and reward those who work in social care and to end, I think, as Alex Rowley quite rightly said, providing care on the cheap. Staff are too often on the for, uh, forgotten front line, and we owe to them to change this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Hoy. I now call Paul O'Kane, who is joining us remotely, to be followed by Gillian Mackay, who will be joining us remotely. Mr O'Kane, around four minutes, please. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I begin by thanking my colleague, Alec Rowley, for securing this extremely important debate today and for his powerful speech outlining the issues. And can I pay tribute to all of our care workers in Scotland who work day in and day out to look after and care for older people, people who have disabilities and people with long-term life-limiting conditions. Their care contribution is immense and their work brings dignity, respect and indeed happiness to the lives of so many and their families. Because caring is an essential service in our communities, but it is more than that. It is a vocation, a role that dedicated and compassionate people offer themselves to. And we know from the figures that these are very are predominantly women. Colleagues may not know this, but when I was a student, I worked in a care home. I was an activities organiser, means that amongst other things, I can call a really mean bingo. It was an experience that taught me a lot about older people and the challenges of living with an illness like dementia. And although I played a small part in a wider team, it was nothing compared to the contribution of care staff. They taught me the most. I was always in awe of their dedication, their patience, and the genuine care with which they supported people living in the home. Taking time to get to know them and their families, finding ways to brighten their days with stories and songs, fiercely protecting their dignity and independence, and sharing with families all the news and important moments they may have missed during the day or week. And in my job prior to being elected here, I had the honour of helping to tell some of the most amazing stories, personal assistance that enable Scotland and the work that they did during the lockdown. Re recreating Friday nights spent at the person they cared for's favourite social club at home, arranging for local pipe bands to play outside people's homes, or linking people up with their loved ones via digital methods. They went above and beyond because they cared. But the respect for their work and the rates of pay never matched what they gave, despite the efforts of some employers, particularly in the third sector. And they still don't today. And Deputy Presiding Officer, that should shame us all. We must acknowledge the skilled and vocational nature of this work and pay people what they deserve, as this motion calls for. I was very struck by the recent Common Real report highlighting the current failings in our care system and calling for ambitious reforms with the advent of the National Care Service in order to deliver the changes we need. And as I have said in the chamber many times, this has to be about values, not structures. And those values begin with our people, the people who deliver care across Scotland. And we don't have to wait, we can act now. Scottish Labour have joined our trade unions, particularly my own union, the GMB, in calling for a 15 pound an hour minimum wage for care workers. And we have advocated this through the last two budget processes but this has been rejected in favour of a 48p rise. If we are serious about honouring what was said in the pandemic about the value of carers, calling them COVID heroes, then that must be matched by our action. And there is also more to do. Better support for the wellbeing of care staff through breaks, supply of food, rest areas and support services. More standardised qualifications that can be accredited and recognised across the care system. Apprenticeships in care, 
showing that it is a valued and important career choice for younger people and clearer progression routes for workers that they can get on. Deputy Presiding Officer, it is clear that we owe all of our carers across the country a huge debt of gratitude. We trust them with the most precious thing in our lives, which is often our family members, often in difficult and challenging circumstances. And as such, we should offer them a rate of pay and a set of conditions that meet the huge responsibility and reflects our talent and dedication. We on these benches will continue to urge the government to act, both offering our own vision of what care should be in Scotland. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kane. And I now call Julian Mackay, who will. Was, point of order from the minister. It was quite difficult to hear Mr. O'Kane there. I picked up um, the bulk of what he said, but it was not easy. I wonder if we're hearing from Mrs. Uh, from Ms. Mackay online if we could try and do something to boost the sound a little bit, please. Thank you, Minister, for your point of order. I did note myself that the sound was patchy. I am sure that the broadcasting unit have heard your plea, and I hope that they act on that. And let's try it out and see how we we go with uh, Gillian Mackay. Uh, Gillian Mackay, I see, is there and ready, and uh, will be the last speaker in the open debate. Around four minutes, please, Ms Mackay. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'll try to use my outside voice just in case it's still quiet. Um, care workers perform an extremely challenging, complex and skilled role. They look after our loved ones, often when they are unwell, vulnerable or coming to the ends of their lives. And I would like to offer my heartfelt thanks to care workers for all that they do. The enormous contribution of care workers to our society has for too long gone unrecognised, however. They were classed as low skilled by the UK government, which we all know is simply not true. It was International Women's Day on Tuesday and the theme was Break the Bias. In light of this, as many others have, it's worth noting that with women making up approximately 85% of the workforce, Failure to properly appreciate social care workers is linked to how we value caring roles which are traditionally performed by women. I was struck by the words of Fiona Colley from Carers UK when she recently gave evidence to the Health, Social Care and Sport Committee. And I quote, We often talked about the important role that the National Health Service plays, but we talked less about the significant role that social care plays in maintaining people's independence and enabling them to live good and positive lives. The role of social care has been very hidden. It is right that social care has now become a national focus and it is long overdue. The pandemic may have highlighted the undervaluation of care workers. This has been a problem since long before any of us had heard of COVID-19. Care staff were often working in difficult conditions before the pandemic with low pay, long hours and insecure work to contend with. But for the past two years, they've also had to deal with a dangerous virus which has devastated care homes. A workforce survey conducted by Scottish Care published its interim findings in September. It found that the number of hours staff were working was markedly high, with increasing pressure on them to maintain the same quality of care while working longer hours. Almost 50% of organisations relayed that their staff were working more than 35 hours a week. I am extremely concerned about the physical and mental well-being of care workers who have been under such sustained pressure. As we seek to help social care recover from the pandemic, we must prioritise workplace well-being. Some care workers may have been traumatised by their experiences and they must be able to access mental health support when they need it. As we enter the recovery period, we are also creating a new national care service, cornerstone of which will be improved terms and conditions for staff. That is why the Greens and the Scottish Government have committed to deliver ethical commissioning that promotes fair work, and this is vital. The independent review of adult social care highlighted that the current approach to commissioning and procurement is characterised by mistrust, conflict and market forces. At the moment, commissioning and procurement processes are largely focused on cost, which can squeeze pay and conditions. Ethical commissioning would shift the emphasis from cost and include a range of factors, including workforce terms and conditions, and investment by providers in training and support for staff, as well as the quality of care. We must ensure staff can access the training they need, as well as opportunities for career development and progression. This will be key to improving both recruitment and retention. That is why we have also committed to a system of national collective bargaining 
through which will deliver improved pay terms and conditions. The increase of the minimum wage for adult social care staff to £10.50 is an initial step in improving pay for care workers, but we recognise that the work is far from over and we will continue towards delivering pay, which recognises the incredible work that care staff do. I will close, Deputy Presiding Officer, by once again extending my thanks to everyone working in the social care sector. We recognise that care workers' pay, terms and conditions must continue to improve. And we will continue to work towards this and create a national care service where staff are properly valued and respected. Thank you, Ms. Mackay. And I now call on Minister Kevin Stewart to respond to the debate on behalf of the Scottish Government. Around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Pre Presiding Officer. Um, and can I first of all um, thank Mr. Rowley for his considered contribution today and the tone and tenor um, of what he outlined in the Chamber? And I think, you know, if we did that more often, uh, we would do a lot better uh, in this place. So thanks to Mr Rowley for that. Um, President Officer, I'd like to uh, thank the social care workforce um, for their remarkable work, providing critical and invaluable support uh, to people right across our country. Um, in this debate, uh, a lot of attention has been rightly paid to social care workers delivering care uh, but like uh, Emma Harper, I would also like to thank and acknowledge the domestic cleaning, maintenance and administration teams whose vital work keep these critical services running. Uh, indeed, I, I would like to thank every member of the social care workforce, uh, including two of my own nieces um, who are social care workers, although uh, one is uh, having a, a wee bit of time off in maternity leave uh, at this moment. Um, this is an important debate to bring to the Chamber, and I thank Mr Rowley um, for bringing it here, and I thank everybody for their contributions. Um, I would object to the fact, though, that the Scottish Government does not value the social care workforce, because we do. Uh, and we are fully committed to improving pay and conditions for the predominantly um, female workforce. The social care system, as it stands at the moment, uh, is complex, um, with over 1,200 employers and huge variation uh, across Scotland, as acknowledged by Derek Feely in his independent report. Uh, and despite this, we are taking action now with partners in local government to make improvements now. Since 2016, the Scottish Government has provided funding to ensure that adult social care workers delivering direct care were paid at least the real living wage. We have led the way across the UK in ensuring these workers have this minimum rate of pay, uh, with the Welsh Government following our lead by adopting this policy um, from April of this year. But we are now going beyond this. Um, in the last few months, we have committed to two significant increases in pay. Uh, a mid-year uplift delivered in de December saw adult social care workers pay increase to at least £10.2 per hour. That was an increase of over 5 per cent. And in April, the minimum hourly rate for those providing adult social care will rise to £10.50 per hour, a further increase of 4.8 per cent. Uh, for a full-time adult so social care worker on the minimum rate, the increase to £10.50 per hour represents an uplift of over £1,600 over the course of the next financial year. And that £10.50 hourly rate in Scotland is 60p higher than the real living wage rate of £9.90 per hour that will apply to workers in Wales from April. Um, Scotland's minimum rate is also significantly, significantly higher than the national living wage rate paid to many social care workers in England and Northern Ireland with workers, here receiving, uh, workers there receiving uh, one pound an hour less than in Scotland. Um, and these, of course, are minimum rates of pay, and Mr Riley is right to point out that some pay, folk are paid more, um, and sometimes there is a, a, seem to be an, an unfairness um, in all of that. Um, and we have heard from the Labour Party uh, and from others uh, around about proposals uh, to increase uh, pay to £15 per hour. But that, presiding officer, would cost £1.75 billion. And we have to have a discussion how we can do better and be realistic 
around about what is achievable, because we cannot spend money twice, and that is what some of the suggestions have been. I am more than willing to speak to Mr Rowley and others on these points. We need to go further, but I think we all have to uh, grasp the reality um, that some of this uh, we will have to work through and find the money because we cannot spend that money twice. So my door is open to Mr Rowley and others uh, with any credible ideas that they may have. And I'll take Mr Hoy. Craig Hoy. I, th I thank the Minister for giving way and also for his uh, commitment to fair pay for the sector. Can the Minister say what assessment the Government makes when changing uh, uh, pay rates in, within social care on uh, the issue of differentials where it has an impact on other uh, care home uh, workers where the Government may not reimburse particularly private sector providers uh, for those increases that will, will then uh, feed through the system? Minister. Well, there is a huge complexity in all of this. You know, those two pay rises in recent times do not come without difficulties because what we have to do in partnership with others is to make sure that the money that the Government has provided actually gets into the pockets and the purses of the workers. Uh, and with 1,200 different employers, that is not as easy as it sounds. And of course, um, the discussions that we have had with COSLA, with local government, with health and social care partnerships, and others, including third sector and private sector uh, employers, that throws up um, other anomalies, um, which we have to work our way through. And, you, you know, I, I've got um, uh, meetings in the very near future uh, around about uh, what has happened here and what the impacts are on other sectors. So we are looking at this too, but this is immensely complex as it stands at this moment in time. Um, and I think, you know, Mr Rowley was right to point out around about the different procurement that goes on, um, some of which, um, you know, uh, certainly didn't happen when he and I um, were in local government. Um, and I think there has been too much emphasis um, on value for money rather than quality services for people, which includes paying staff well and ensuring that you have a workforce <coughs> excuse me, um, which um, has the freedom and autonomy to do what is right for the clients um, that they are visiting um, on a day and daily basis and caring for. Uh, and that's why ethical procurement, as Gillian Mackay has mentioned, is so important as we move forward, because we have to get this absolutely right. And ethical procurement includes fair work. And it's not just fair work, uh, President Officer, because caring is a profession. And we have to ensure that in order to attract new people, young people, to that profession, that they can see the opportunity to advance in their careers. And that's why it's so important that we have the right apprenticeships, the right ability um, to, uh, to continuously improve and get the qualifications, and the ability to swap careers between social care, social work, the NHS, if uh, and when that is right. And I am committed uh, to doing all of that. We must ensure that we build a social care system for the future with human rights at its very heart, with a person-centred approach. Um, and we must include in all of that fair pay uh, and fair work um, for the people who work in it. And that is why we will continue to engage with our national care service proposals to get that right. However, we cannot wait for national care service itself to make some of those improvements. And that's why I'll continue uh, to talk to COSLA um, who I think uh, have been very positive with the government in terms of looking at what more we can do. Uh, President officer, uh, I will conclude uh, because the government are absolutely committed to improve the experience of the workforce through fair work practices because we deeply value uh, and respect the vital role um, that social care workers play in our communities. And let's be honest, without them, uh, over the past two years, life would have been very much different for many, many people. So plaudits to them, and my door is open to others uh, to see how we can work together to improve further in this front. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you, Minister. And that concludes the debate, and I suspend this meeting until 2.15 this afternoon. Thank you.